Welcome, Hordlings, to another Game Hoarder production. I am extremely honored and proud to present to you The Bard's Tale Remastered. The 2018 remaster, I should say, because it was released, I believe, in 2004 with the Windows edition that was enhanced above the original from 1985. I have been waiting for this for a while, ever since it was announced in the Kickstarter for Bard's Tale 4. I've been constantly checking. At first, um, it was the project was handed over to Old School, Old School uh, .com, the team of females who obviously dropped the ball on this remake, and since then, in exile handed it over to some people that could get it done right. And here we are. We're going to be playing the remastered version. We're not going to take away any of the changes. You can't play in a legacy version. Um, yeah. Looks like my audio is good. Let's start a new game. Volume 1 was released yesterday. I think it's very cool that they are going to do the whole trilogy and we can only hope and pray they do Dragon Wars and any other game that they had access to. I hear Wasteland is going to get a remake. So these are a lot of things to be excited about. You can see Destiny Knight and the Thief of Fate are due out later this year. We're starting with Tales of the Unknown. I'm pretty sure I have this whole trilogy uh, in physical box. It's been so long since I've whipped out the DOS collection. So here's some of the legacy options that you can uncheck if you want it to be just like the old school game. We're going to leave it all, uh, especially the higher XP requirement. We're not trying to make this a grind session. We're just trying to enjoy the game for what it is. Every mage should know where Roscal's energy emporium is. The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry day. When evil fled and brave man bled, the dark one came to stay. Of castle walls and torch lit halls, and the price men had to pay. Till men of old, for blood and gold, had rescued Scara Bray. Volume 1 Tales of the Unknown The Legend of Scara Bray Long ago in the land of Caith, when magic still prevailed, the evil wizard Magnar, the Dark, threatened a small but harmonious town called Scarabre. Overnight, all the town's militiamen disappeared, and Magnar froze the surrounding countryside with the spell of eternal winter, totally isolating it from any possible help. As evil creatures oozed into the sewers to join Magnar's shadow crusade, the future of Scarabre hung in the balance. And who was left to resist? Only a handful of unproven young warriors, some junior magic users, a couple of bards barely old enough to drink, and a few out-of-work rogues. You are the leader of this ragtag group of freedom fighters. Luckily, you have a bard with you to sing your glories if you survive. For this is the stuff of legends. And thus, the story begins. And thus, the st there we go. As you enter the guild, you catch the eye of the guildmaster. 
Well met, brave adventurer. But you've come in the most dire of times. The evil wizard Magna has cursed our town with this blizzard, and the streets are overrun with all matters of evil miscreants. You must help us defeat Magna. In this guild, you will find many skilled warriors and mages that would join you in this quest. When your party is ready, set out to the town. Be sure to visit Goth's shop to the north and equip yourself for battle. He has the finest weapons and armor in Scarabre, and indeed is the only shop brave enough to be open these days. The city has an abundance of temples that are open night and day to heal your wounds, and I believe Roscoe is still doing good business restoring magic points for your mages. And when your bard gets thirsty, be sure to visit one of the many inns and taverns. The Scarlet Bar to the south has the best selection in town. Now I'll bid you good day and good luck in your quest. The Guildmaster smiles and returns to what he was doing. Alright. Try to uh, turn the sound down just a little bit. So it's not too overpowering. After all, we want to hear my voice first and foremost. So here we are at the party creation screen. You can add, remove, create, delete, all that good stuff. It comes, of course, with Brian Fargo and his list of brigands. El Cid, Marcus, Sir Grady, Merlin, Omar. I believe these were characters from the original, which I will preface this video by saying I've never completed the original. In fact, it's been a long, a long time, so I can't remember how far I got. So you can add members this way, or you can add the whole group. You can make rosters for your party. I've, of course, already created my own party. So we'll go ahead and load that up. And here we are, right outside the guild. So we can go back in there. You want to hear the great bard music? We can talk to the guild leader. When you go to the character creation screen, you can pick different races, classes, pretty standard stuff. You cannot alter the statistics. You just re-roll until you get something that looks good. And then you must accept the character. There's no way to change portraits. You just get a portrait based off your race and class. I think more off your class because they all kind of look human to me. Uh, even if you pick, like, the half-orc. Yeah, so the warriors all look the same, the paladins all look the same. Race will not dictate your portrait at all. But again, this is a remake off a game from 1985. Didn't have a lot of room on the diskettes back then. So we had to make do with what we had. Let's go over the party. I just completed Might and Magic 2 today. That is already uploaded. I wanted to jump right into this. I will probably also jump right into Might and Magic 3 because I was really excited to start that as well. And yes, I'm still dealing and dibbly dabbling with Might and Magic 2 for the Fanacom. But that's neither here nor there. We're looking at the Bard's Tale. So obviously the graphics have been revamped and there's been some more user accessibility here to help us out. In the upper left corner we have our pause menu where we can get to the ability to save pretty much everywhere we want to, I think. Um, I haven't played any of this. But there was a legacy uh, option to turn that off to be able to save anywhere 
cut back on reloading, things like that. Your party stops for a moment and takes a good look around. You're on Main Street, facing east. It's now early morning. You'll also notice we have cool little weather effects going on. I'm not sure if it will snow the entire game, but it is, we are surrounded by the wintry effects of the evil wizard Magnar, so that's very possible. We can also cast spells out of party. We can play a bard song. Yellow. We can use items, which of course we have nothing equipped yet. We can portal up and portal down. Some of the dungeons require levitation spells, excuse me, to get around. We can party attack. You have a cool little mini map here that you see will appear uh, in the lower right corner of the screen. You can also change the translucency of this and make it lighter or darker. I'll probably keep that on while I familiarize myself with the city. But better yet, you have this awesome, awesome, awesome auto map here in the journal. And it's going to keep track of our city maps, our dungeon maps, the different levels. We can use Scry Sight, a port arcane, to teleport anywhere on any level of the current dungeon. It does not work in cities, and you cannot teleport between different dungeons. We have a cool little legend going on here. I can see the Adventurer's Guild. Empty houses. We're going to try to map out as much of this as possible. You can change the priority of characters by just dragging and dropping them. Boy, do I wish I had this in Might and Magic 2. So who made it over? Well, we got good old Lug Lug. He's our male half-orc warrior. I ended up rolling him with 16 strength, 6 intelligence, 11 dexterity, 18 constitution, 6 luck, 28 hit points. Inventory is also shared, so we have two lamps out of 40. Whatever is not equipped. So you can see we can unequip and unequip lamps per character. This is Lo Wang. He was a uh, human ninja in Mind Magic 2. There's no real ninjas in this game, but he's now a male human monk. 16 strength, 9 intelligence, 15 dexterity, 14 constitution, and 11 luck. Viper is also rejoining us. She was our archer in Might and Magic 2. She is now a female human hunter. 16 strength, 13 intelligence, 15 dex, 14 constitution, 10 luck. And 5 to her critical hit. Now, I did look at party creation and different forums and guides and things like that. And there was people that said, just make three monks because they're the best warriors and they get the best AC and do the most damage later and blah, blah, blah. That's no freaking fun. We want to have a nice cornucopia of classes and races. And we're not trying to just strong arm our way through the game. I fully expect we should die a few times here and that's okay. Especially we now that we have the advantages of an auto map and saving the game. We have YOLO. I needed a bard in the party and I don't normally make bards. But I thought of Yolo from Ultima, who I've called Iolo my whole life. And I decided just to do Yolo. You only live once, right? So might as well make a bard. 17 strength, 9 intelligence, 14 dex, 15 constitution, and 9 luck. And he's got some bard songs. You gotta have a bard in Bard's Tale. Jesus. Clot is also joining us. Clot the Cleric is now Clot the Elven female conjurer 11 strength 15 intelligence 13 dex 8 constitution and 10 luck your wizards can 
basically become other magic users throughout the game. Read a little bit about it. Uh, from what I understand, you want to get to the highest level of spells at first before you transfer over, because once you go there, you can't go back. You cannot make a sorcerer or wizard from the beginning, so it's my assumption that you eventually can transcribe over to that class or transfer to that class, transition, whatever you want to call it. She has Mage Flame, Arc Fire, Sorcerer's Shield, and Trap Zap. Ron Stock, of course, is our male elf magician. Maybe I should switch those two around. Because the Magician is more of the healer. I just like the way Clot the Conjurer sounded. Hell, why not? We'll just have a class change. I'm not sure Ron Stock will be okay with this, but he's casting magic. He'll have to deal. We also have the Party Gold and the Inventory. Oh, and Ronstock's actually happy because he gets to wear a black robe and he has a staff with a skull on it. So he's not complaining too much. And that's our party. All right. Game's over. Y'all have a great day. Let's go find... Garth's shop. Your battle cry is heard by all as you face two hobgoblins. We will fight bravely, and we may die bravely as well. So the way combat works on here is you dictate all the commands at first, and then combat ensues after that. Uh, you can also attack your party. I'm not sure why. Maybe they can get charmed and you can knock them out of that. Maybe you just want to be malicious and kill your own people. I don't know. Again, been too long since I've played this, and I never got very far. I was too busy beating Eye of the Beholder over and over and over. And in 85, I wasn't that old. <laughs> I was only seven. So I wasn't really at that age where I was uh, diving deep into grid paper and RPGs. So we'll attack. Your first four characters can attack with melee. Mage Flame, a small mobile torch, will appear and float above the spellcaster as he travels. Well, it's not a he. Clot is a she, thank you. A fan of blue flames will shoot from the caster's fingers, doing hits of damage to select an opponent. Hits of damage to a select opponent. Times the caster's level. And a sorcerer's shield. The mage is protected by an invisible shield of magic that turns aside many blows that will otherwise hit her. Again, you can choose your own party members, except yourself, which is interesting. Ron Stock is now officially the master of all magic. I think it'd be nice if one thing that would be nice is if they made the right click a back button, because it's kind of a pain in the butt. And as you can see, I can't back out of this even if I click the X. I have to actually physically hit the escape key. And I should just be able to right click. We'll have him defend. 
And then it gives you a list of your commands. I like this. Another thing I like is I don't think I'm going to have to fight 255 monsters at once. If you go watch my last Might and Magic 2 video, video 20, that final dungeon was annoying as piss. YOLO punches at the goblin and hits for three. Lo Wang punches the goblin in the balls and hits for one. Lug Lug kicks a goblin directly in the dick for two points of damage, killing it. So yeah, we're not equipped yet. We need weapons, folks. Still face one hobgoblin. I've already taken serious damage to my bard. Attack, 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 defend, defend. Love the sound effects, love the the um, the little graphical punches and kicks and attacks in the upper left window. Definitely a welcome addition to the game. Viper punches out a hobgoblin and critically hits it for one point of damage, killing it. Each character receives 30 experience points for valor and battle knowledge. The party receives 55 pieces of gold and finds robes. The stink of hobgoblin piss and shit. Welcome to Goss Equipment Shop, oh wealthy travelers. Which of you is interested in my fine wares? Oh, I think we're all interested in your fine wares. Great teens, Lug Lug, what would you like? Okay, so things in red I cannot use. Thank you for being obvious. Um, okay. Let me back out. Buy, sell, identify. Okay. And I think we just start butt naked. One to sixteen damage, so that's a, a one d sixteen. That's two d four. The war axe. We have to distribute it amongst six characters. Twelve hundred and fifty five gold. That's not a whole hell of a lot. I think we'll get a broadsword for Lug Lug. Lo Wang's a monk. I'm not entirely sure how they work. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be able to attack without weapons. Let's get a uh, longbow. Let's see if we go to... Low Wang. Yeah, we need to buy per character. And you'll have to bear with me, folks, this first couple videos as I acclimate to this game. It's it's new. It's nothing like the Might and Magic I've been pouring time into. So it's going to kind of take me a while to get my flow of things here. And plus, I just got off a really long, arduous day of work. Um, I feel like we want to get the monks something. Get him a staff. That's what he's carrying in the picture. And it's only 20 bucks. He can also wear the robes. Now, I got to get used to the, the new format here because, of course, in the other game, Viper was an archer and she was constantly using a bow. Here it seems like she's going to be more of a ranger class where she's really good with swords and bows. 
Uh, you can see this weapon only does one to four. There's no, there's no actual ranged combat in here. If she was in the back, this bow would matter, but she's not going to be. Give her some chain mail though. We'll get her a broad short broadsword as well. We'll get you a cool bow later, Viper. Our bard, YOLO. Broadsword. And chain. I'm assuming he starts with the loot and it doesn't count as an item. See, I gotta hit escape. There's gotta be another way to go back. That's just not cool. Uh, Clot the Conjurer, our offensive mage. Item class instrument. Conjurers cannot use this. That's not an instrument. That's robes, baby. I should maybe get our monks some better armor. So we'll give the robes to Clot or Ronstock. They're casting spells. They can't do a whole lot back there. We'll just get them some daggers in case they get moved to the front for 20 bucks. I don't want to leave them naked. Probably find some robes as we did. I'm going to just get Lug Lug some chain for now. Okay, Lug Lug, you can have scale. You talked me into it. Gauntlets and leather gloves. Gauntlets are only 40. Oh, here's our here's our instruments. Does our bard not start with an instrument? Let us check out equipping. All right, so that's our item bag. He's automatically putting this stuff on. Armor class is kind of like the old school D&D. &D, the Thacko, the second edition where you start at 10 and armor reduces it. So the lower the armor class, the better. This makes sense. This came out back in the old school D&D &D era. So they auto-equipped as we bought, which is probably pretty cool, too. Um, so you don't really need to trade in this. You can see if it's not equipped, it's in the party inventory. So low wing can just throw these robes on. Although I think I might buy, buy him a little bit better armor for now. Robes and a dagger, robes and a dagger, chainmail and a broadsword, broadsword and chainmail, staff, helm, gauntlet, scale. All right. Looking good. And then, of course, save.
good old classic save game name that we've used over the years. Game order rules, baby. I'm not so sure what to do with the monk. He's already at 9 AC and he's level 1. And from my understanding, his armor class will actually end up being better without any armor. I'm going to just go ahead and leave it off for now. See how he fares. So it doesn't look like you can really alter or write or... Well, can you? There's a journal entry. Maybe that pops up later. So the first thing we want to do is just level. Get some get some levels under our belt and explore a little bit. But probably stay close to where we can where we can heal as well. You can go into any of these Houses, some are empty and some have things. Sir, whoa, I was reading that. And then two spiders attacked me. Ah, okay, they're 20 feet away. This is why we have bows. And that's why it said we can advance. Okay, so bows, bows are useful. I figure the arc fire spell would be okay from a distance. Oh no, don't don't attack the party, defend. Spider bit YOLO. Whoa! Spiders are evil. And dead. Fifty experience points. And a hundred gold pieces. There's a scrap of parchment from the Adventures Guild handbook here. It reads, Explore and map every square and every maze. There are magic mouths that give hints. There are one-of-a-kind items and spell regeneration zones. Good maps will show you logical spots for secret doors and secret rooms, too. Okay. So this journal entry from this house. Now it says empty house, but does it really know that? we search it. See, now it'd be cool if I could mark this off as searched. Or if it changed the color or something. You face death itself in the form of three magicians. Well, I'm certainly not going to run at this juncture. Let's see what bard songs we have. This tune increases damage your party will do in combat by driving them into a berserker rage. This song will produce light when exploring, and during combat it will increase the party's chance of hitting. This song will soothe your savage foes, making them do less combat. This is an ancient elven melody which will heal the bard's wounds during traveling and heal party wounds during combat. Okay, keep, keep note of that. This uh, Traveler's Tomb makes the members of your party more dexterous and agile, and thus more difficult to hit. And Lucklaran, this song sets up a partial anti-magic field which gives party members some increased protection against spellcasting. Sing it!
Okay, and let's go ahead and heal YOLO. Get some magician! Oh, you got up! Oops, I guess we need an instrument to play a bard song. Fight bravely! Let's go buy an instrument after these messages. This combat is already much more fulfilling than any of the combats in Might and Magic 2. I am glad I have finally beat that game. Okay, so yeah, you can get uh, double attacked here. The sudden scream of battle brings your party to a halt. You face two barbarians. One is named Luglug, -Lug, and the other one is named Gluglug, -Lug, his drunken brother. Speaking of which, I have some good news. I don't want to get into it now. But uh, I forget which subscriber it was. I think it might have been a, a patron. Came up with the awesome idea of doing a Let's Drink with Luglug -Lug series called Glug Glug with Luglug. -Lug. Um, you can identify yourself in the comments since I forgot your name, whoever you are. But anyways, I thought it was a fantastic idea. So I'm going to be doing uh, beer reviews more or less on a, uh, a new new type of video for the channel. Okay, that's enough about that. We are going to attack these barbarians and show them who's boss. Balls to the walls, boss. How the hit points looking? Good, good, good. Lug Lug could use uh, a little healing. Ooh, Barbarian slashes that low wing. Holy crap. I already killed low wing. I don't know how to get people back from the dead. Oh, we need a thousand. Yeah, this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> um, yeah, crap. I'm not sure where to heal. I think I'm just going to reload and, and... That sucks. Welcome to Bard's Tale, folks. We need to get you an instrument, sir. Definitely a mandolin. That's what I play in real life. Not really, I play a guitar, but still. YOLO! Alright, he's got his mandolin equipped, we're good. Better save. That was a lot of work I just did. So apparently if you just stand around here in town, you will be attacked. It's like a ticker or a timer or something. <clears throat> you can be attacked for standing still. We need to try to find us a temple. We're on Blacksmith Street now, by the way. Give me a break. Where do they come from? I think we'll be okay with this one. Jesus.
All right. So when your bard plays music, you can see there the timer. And the timer is constantly going in the game. But for 593 more game minutes, he will play this tune. And his hit points should be going up. He heals himself out of combat. And I think, I believe it said he heals others in combat. During traveling, yeah. Those do look a bit darker, actually. Let's... Okay, it is showing it. You can see they've gotten a bit darker. So that's cool. I apologize for not spotting that earlier. I thought I saw a more of a shadow there, but... Your battle cry is heard by all you face. A mercenary who's 20 feet away. All right, well, unfortunately, I'm going to advance. And the mercenaries advance. And I still face one, and we're going to fight. You keep playing that song, Bard. We're going to handle this guy. Five points from Viper. Two from Low Wang's Mighty Staff of Doom. Yolo slashes at a mercenary. Cutting him asunder for eight points of damage. Each character receives 33, 36 points of valor in battle. 15 gold and stuff. That looks like a lot more than 15 gold. I like this song. Um, a auto, a, a quick save and a quick load. Do those exist? I don't know. Those would be great. Let me try. Uh, yes! F5! And it looks like F6 is the quick load. Searching the room, you discover some parchment from the Adventures Guild handbook. God dang it, you stupid gnomes! Seven gnomes attack! And they are uglier than hell. Holy hell, those look like goblins, not gnomes. What the hell happened to you? Are these like fallout gob gnomes? Look like you got hit with the radiation. Alright, we're gonna need to go balls deep on this. Attack bard. Gnome, kill gnomes. Um, Lo Wang is pretty beat up. YOLO! Now I believe only the first four monsters in front can attack us, unlike <laughs> Might and Magic, where you could get hit by the first 12 monsters or whatever. Combat here seems a bit more fair so far. Uh, again, this isn't as treacherous as the original, but that's okay. I need a little break after that last RPG. Uh, how spell points doing? Good. I'm good. I'm glad I rolled decent starting spell points. I am gonna figure out how. Have to figure out how to rest and heal and all that, cause I don't know. Um, Lo Wing is still beat up, but he did kill an O. 
Ha! You no mess with Kill Wang. Yeah. Now Viper's beat up. Come on, no whammies. Uh, not sure why I can't just back out of that. They'll probably patch that, I'm assuming. There we go. 200 pieces of gold. And 93 experience. That was a good battle. Beware your doppelganger monster. It enters your party and looks just like one of your members. What? I quick save when I hear shit like that. Your party finds a torch. This is awesome that you can actually find different things in these houses. Searching the room, you discover some parchment from the Adventurer's Guild Handbook. It reads, Be prepared to die a lot with level 1 and 2 characters, especially at night. Especially when you don't have any weapons. And God dang it, mad dogs! Why are you attacking me while I'm reading this parchment? The denizens of this mystic place assault you without warning. You see four... What? That's a mad dog that looks like... Fuck, I don't know. A demon Chewbacca or something. Fight. Fight. No, don't. Stop trying to attack. Someone will have to explain to me the party attack thing. Because I don't get it. Oh, Jesus. So you can see I messed up here. Uh, Clot was about to arc fire on Lug Lug. So we can cancel. I gotta get used to that. Party attack should be like over here. Because who the hell is going to do that often? Uh, defend. Defend. Jeez. Awesome sound effects. Good job, guys. Oh, scale armor. All right. Might be a good idea to stay close to a temple at night so you can quickly heal wounds. Well, guess what? I can't do quick fix out of battle. We don't want to be stuck out here at night, that's for sure. Upgrade your armor, might as well. Well, I'm having fun as hell so far. But I do need to find a temple. Solid! 
<laughs> Three barbarians. Uh, let's go for it. Hopefully we come across a temple soon. In the meantime... Ooh, man. It doesn't really show you who's assigning attacks to where. You're just kind of like, okay. Do your best. I love lamp. Okay, good. Multiple quick saves are always nice. Two thieves! I'm going to spam this this quick fix for now. Unfortunately, I'm not getting to do anything with it. Oh goodness, six mad dogs. Let's see what happens when we run. Oh, okay, that was painless. Spell points. Oh, okay. Rascal's energy emporium. Who needs this? Does this cost money? Oh, yes, it does. Claude has some definite spell point problems. It'll cost 40 gold. To get four? It's 10, 10, 10, 10 bucks a spell point? Yeah, it is. Keep you marked on my map, but, uh,. I want to see if I can rest and get health back as well. I see hands. Welcome, O weary ones, to our humble temple. Who needeth healing? But we all do. I guess we need to... Huh. So we don't just rest, we pay for healing, it looks like. Why did that totally just give me a Monty Python vibe? <laughs> that was some Monty Python shit right there. All right.
If I do say so myself, I'm happy to be healed. Now we know where the temples are. We're trying to stay close to everything. Oh crap, it's three orcs. Look, look, an orc. Well, half orc anyway. My bard song's still rocking. And I'm gonna just keep casting spells. Vorpal plating, air armor. Ah, this causes the weapon of a party member to be covered with magical field, which causes him to do two to eight extra damage. Nice. Uh, maybe we should do that. I don't know how strong orcs are. They're not that strong. Lug Lug just did 10 points of damage to him. Ooh, a war axe. Noice! Ah, uh, this game is, makes it so easy. I'm so glad I waited to do this series with the remastered edition. <laughs> I can just hover my cursor over it. And after Might and Magic 2 and all the identifying and having to back out of the shop and having to look at each individual weapon. Oh, man, this is a godsend. Feel free to remake Might and Magic 1 and 2 as well. They should give you guys all the rights. Those are both two to eight. I think I can sell some of this stuff. like to be reviewed for advancement this must be the training the review board so this is where you'd level spell acquiring and class changing as for our mages to advance and more majory The review board of the Sinister Inn. Hail travelers, step to the bar and I'll draw you a tankard. Talk ain't cheap. We we'll give them five gold. A taste of wine might turn to ready adventure. The barkeep chuckles. Seat thyself, Lug Lug. What'll it be? Well, I'm actually drinking on some Lagunitas right now, so we'll have a beer. Not bad. The Dragon's Grog, two drink minimum. Trying to get me drunk.
Your foes seem endless. Their tales are known. You face seven gnomes. Big battle. Dead gnome. I think this bard spell of healing is helping a lot in the beginning. Every hit point counts at this point. Spear, 220 gold and 93 experience. We are a little over halfway home. Luglug -lug needs a thousand. Our monk needs 900. Thousand, thousand, 900, 900. Interesting. Usually in games, the wizard requires more than the warrior. Got up to back up to over a thousand gold. I'd say that's a good start with everyone equipped. Can actually buy some plate. So it's showing us the difference. If we buy the plate, it'll give us plus one armor. Uh, Seven hundred gold though. All right, this is cool. I can instant swap. That's good to know. Get a tower shield for Lug Lug. Also get a longbow and some arrows for Viper. Lug Lug's got that good AC now. Ten arrows. We'll see how that works. Hopefully she can equip a sword in the middle of combat. Alright folks. Our party has had enough for the day. They're going to take a rest here the Guild of Adventurers, and we'll see you next time with some more Bard's Tale, Tales of the Unknown. Thanks for watching.